Hi ladies have returned. Uh, this is Ben. Uh, this is a talk which I think will be of interest to many of us. Um, so without further ado, here we go. Could you give him a big hand please? All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm a Python developer at Yellow. I'm really excited to be here at uh, Kiwi PyCon in Wellington. In fact, I went out for a run this morning and took a photo of the sunset for you all. And it's also for my colleagues who maybe didn't make it earlier. We all know that uh, Python might not be the fastest language out there, but everyone always says, well, that doesn't matter because if you've got any slow functions, you can rewrite them in C. And probably like many of you, I'd always heard that you can integrate Python in C, but I'd never actually given it a try because I just thought it would be too difficult but it turns out it's probably easier than you think. So this talk isn't about how I took a Python project and rewrote it in C and got some uh, speed gains. It's going to be more along the lines of, given that I have some code that runs faster in C, how do you actually integrate that with Python? I'll just run through uh, some of the things I'll be covering. I'll start off by comparing the differences between the two main ways of integrating with C, uh, building a C module or using C types. For an example, I use a simple algorithm and I'll implement that in five different ways just to contrast and uh, compare uh, the different methods of doing this. And finally, just finish by looking at some speed comparisons between those implementations. So, the two main ways of integrating with C you can either build a C module, a uh, Python module in C, and this is the more traditional way of doing it. You do have to write a lot of wrapper code in C, but ironically, this does allow you to be more Pythonic. And you can integrate with ex Python exceptions, help text, and, and so on. Now, C types is the newer way of doing this, and by newer, I mean it's only been around since 2006, but it is simpler to implement, and you might not need to write any uh, extra C code at all. So we can visualize these differences on a code continuum. We have a, a, a project written purely in Python would sit right on the left, and a project written purely on C would sit on the right. C types will sit maybe around here. Um, if you've already got a C library that's been written and compiled in the right way, you don't have to write any C at all, and that will sit all the way to the left. And a C module sits over here because you do have to write um, a lot more C. But in terms of integration with Python, it's a different story. C module sits here, allows you to be very well integrated with Python, and C type sits far to the right because you're dependent on what uh, your C library is actually giving to you. So to demo, I needed a simple but computationally expensive example, and I've gone with the classic figuring out if a number is prime or not. Let's burn Optimus there. So I've chosen a super naive way of, of doing this. So the algorithm will take a number, and for every divisor up to the square root of that number, see if the number is evenly divisible by the divisor. If it is, return false. It's not prime. If we get to the end of the loop, return true. It is prime, and there's provisions in there uh, to return for one and true, which are special cases. So really, this algorithm is just uh, iterate over a bunch of numbers and do some math with each one. Now, unless you're the dude in the back with the open SSL shirt furiously taking notes, you're thinking, this is not a good real-world example. But really, I just need something that's easy to understand, easy to implement, and most importantly, it runs faster in C than in Python. <laughs> so the five ways that I'm going to uh, implement the algorithm is purely in Python, then purely in C, in Python, and in, uh, in C, and integrate with Python with a C module, and C integrate with Python with C types. And finally, I'm going to run it under PyPy just to see how that compares. So the pure Python version is going to be run under CPython, which is the bog standard Python implementation that um, you've all heard about this morning. And it's available for every different OS out there, except maybe Windows. Um, the implementation looks suspiciously like the pseudocode that I just showed you. So it takes a number, 
uh, we return false for even and one, true for two. Otherwise, for every odd number up to the uh, up to the test maximum, which is square root of the number, see if it's evenly divisible. If it is, return false. If we get to the end, return true. Then I need a Python script which actually gets run on the command line to um, to call that is prime naive function, and it looks like this. So I'm using here a function which I've called main, and that's a great name for a function. So this takes care of, um, well, I'll show you the implementation there. This just takes care of parsing the command line arguments, um, and you can use the dash b flag to call out to do some benchmarking. Now the argument that the main function takes is the function that's, only, that's going to be called um, to check for primality, and it gets used throughout here. So I've done it this way so that in any implementation that uses Python, I can just simply change the function it's using to check for primality and I don't have to rewrite all this stuff. And the benchmarking code looks like that. It just iterates up to a number uh, of your choice and checks every number in there for primality. Now, it's important to note here that I'm doing the iteration, iteration in Python and in future I'll only be calling out to C for the primality checking. You know, if you run that script from the command line, it, the interface is like this. Give it a number, it'll tell you if it's prime or not, or use the dash b flag for some benchmarking. The next way I implemented it is in uh, pure C. And the function looks like that. It has the same logic as the uh, Python code. Return false for even and one, true for two. Otherwise, iterate over every odd number, et cetera, et cetera. And the function that's doing calculating the prime test maximum basically does that, which is getting the integer version of, this, of the uh, square root of the number being checked. Now this is all in a file I've called um, conmath.c. And to build the pure C binary, I start off with that file. I compile it into a shared object file. And I do this because in the future I need to be able to, well, I don't need to, but it's nice to be able to reference to that uh, shared object file, and you'll see why. I then write a main.c file, which does the same stuff as my main Python function. It um, passes the command line arguments and also has that same benchmarking function built in. It links against the shared object file and then builds the pure C binary. And you can see that the interface there is the same. It'll tell you if a number's prime or not, or you can benchmark. So the third implementation is in Python, but with a module written in C. And there's three things you need to do to build a Python C module. First, you need to write your functions in C that Python is actually going to call. Next, you need to define a mapping between the Python naming and the C naming. And finally, you just need to write an init function to do the module setup. So your wrapper code in C <coughs> can be quite simple. So if you've already got an implementation in C, Basically, all your wrapper code is going to be doing is transforming values from uh, Python into C and vice versa. So I've done all my C code in a single file because it's quite simple. Um, this is called conmathpy.c. And this is the first half of the file. And I'll just <laughs> walk through the interesting parts. So to start off, just you need to import the uh, Python header file and, of course, any other header files that you need to use. You then need to define um, the function that is going to be called from Python. In this case, it's called conmathpy is prime naive. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's C for you. The arguments it takes are self, which isn't used in this example, and args, which are a list of arguments that have come from um, calling the function in Python. You then parse those arguments using the pyarg parse tuple function, and you need to tell it the type of arguments it's getting, and the capital I there says that it's an unsigned integer it should be parsing, and you need to give it a pointer to where it's going to be storing what it parses. I then call out to the isPrimeNaive function, which uh, is what I showed you earlier. It's the, it's the same C, and it's coming straight from uh, the conmath.c file. And in the end, I need to use pi build value to convert that result back into a Python variable. And the uh, i argument there just indicates that it's just a standard integer. Next thing you need to do is 
write a Pi method definition uh, um, array, which defines the mapping between the Python names and the C names. Uh, this is the second half of my um, C file. And the method definitions are up there. I'll just step, through, step you through each item. So the first argument is the name of the function that Python will see. The second argument is a reference to the function I just wrote. This tells Python that it sh uh, this tells C that it should be expecting, or well, it tells the function it should be expecting the arguments as an array um, or a list of arguments. You can also pass the myth keyword, uh, myth keywords if you're passing a quags dictionary in. And the fourth element there is just some help text. And the last item in that outer array is just a sentinel to indicate the end of the array. And finally, just write an init function which sets which sets up the module. Here it's quite simple. It needs to be named relative to your Python module, so it needs to be called init Python module name. And then you just call pi init module in there and you tell it the name of the module that you're initing and you give it a reference to that definition um, that I wrote above. And if you need to do any more setup or anything for your module, you can do it inside that function. You then need to make a setup.py file, which tells it how to build. Um, you tell it what C files it's compiling, where to find the libraries and that kind of thing. This is probably not a perfect, perfect example because uh, the way I needed to lay out the code um, to be built in different implementations, but it works. And then you write your Python script, which gets called from the command line, and you can bring in um, the new is prime naive function. So this looks similar to the previous Python implementation, and all that's changed there is that instead of importing is prime naive from pythonlib.conmath, I'm bringing it straight out of conmath, uh, which is the C version. And of course, when I run that, because it's using that same main function, uh, the interface is the same. Pass in a number, it'll tell you if it's prime or not, or do some benchmarking. So I'm not going to be showing you any more C code because we've already written it all, and that's what the beauty of C types is. I just need to write a new Python, function, uh, Python script to get called, and it looks like this. I'll just go through the interesting parts. I'm bringing CDLL in from C types, and what CDLL does is it lets you create a reference to a shared object file or a DLL. So you tell it the path to the shared object file that you're opening. And so now lib is a reference to libconmath.so. And to refer to my isPrimeNaive function from there, all I need to do is, uh, is access it like this. And you can access any uh, function that's been defined in that shared object file. And that's it. Because I'm using the same main function again, interface is the same. Is the number prime or not? Do some benchmarking. And the final way I'm implementing this is in PyPy, just to get a speed comparison there. So if you're not aware, PyPy is a just-in-time compiler for Python, written in Python. It's super easy to install. You just download and uncompress it. There's binaries available for a bunch of different operating systems. And you can just use it anywhere you would have previously called your Python binary. You don't need to make any changes to your Python code but that's provided that your libraries are supported. So because it doesn't use C, um, libraries written in C might not work with it. And to run it, all I do is call the py, PyPy binary instead of Python, pass it the um, path to the original script. Same interface again, but of course it's running a lot faster, as you can see. Now let's have a look. How much faster is it? Some benchmarks. So to generate these benchmarks, I used the dash b flag and I evaluated each number up to a million for primality, measured the execution time using time, took the total time as being user plus sys. I ran each implementation 10 times and took the mean of the results. So in terms of raw execution time, Python took 4.6 seconds. Pure C, any guesses? 
0.42 seconds. We all love C, right? Uh, using the C module, 0.57 seconds. And with C types, 0.82 seconds. And under PyPy, 1.45 seconds. So in terms of relative speed up, if we take C Python as being 1, pure C is 11.14 times faster in this example. C module 8.16 times faster, C types 5.7 times faster, and PyPy is 3.2 times faster. So what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, I'll go in reverse order. PyPy, well, that gives you some very good gains. We saw a three times improvement here without any changes to the Python code. But that's provided you don't need to use a library that it doesn't support. And of course, it's a little bit outside the scope of this talk because it is not a solution for integrating Python with C. With C types, you don't have to write any wrapper C code, provided your library already compiles to a shared object. And it's simple to use if you're happy without Python exceptions and so on coming back from your library. And it is pretty darn fast. So the advantage you'd have here is if someone else in your team can write some C for you and then just let you do the cool python -y stuff, you should use this. With the C module, you do have to write a bunch of wrapper C, but it does give you good integration with Python types, exceptions, and objects. And it's faster than C types. It's getting closer to pure C. And of course, the more that you can move into your C, um, the faster you'll be able to get your code. So for example, I change the benchmarking slightly. So instead of iterating over every number in Python, I also put that out to C. And I got the C module implementation to be in the 0.46 second-ish. So yeah, really close. So in that point, Python is just uh, parsing command line arguments. So you could write it in pure C, but what are you doing here? This is a Python conference. And pure Python. Well, it's slow, but we love it. And it's the reason that we're all here. So that's it. If you want to play along at home, you can find uh, the, all that example code on GitHub. Um, you can see the slides in a write-up on my blog, but you're here, and you've just seen me talk about it, so you're not the target audience for that. Um, and hopefully you've all learned something. You can go back to your managers and say, I want to ditch Python and switch to C. Cheers. All right, uh, we've got time for questions. Yep, you've got one. Uh, did you consider trying Swig and Boost Python? No, I know there's a lot of different um, compilers and so on that, that do it, but yeah, I, I haven't tried different ones, but I'm sure you can get good results. From then too. Should we, at the very least, switch to PyPy or something greater when using duty heavy algorithms? Um, I don't know if it's if it's always necessary. I mean, I think you need to take it as as a case by case basis. I don't know so much about how PyPy actually works and where you're going to get speed ups with it. So I guess it's a case of trying it, see if it seeing if it works for your use case and yeah so go with it just interested if there's any implications for re recovering memory if you went onto your game c was always terrible for recovering memory right um yeah i'm not sure i haven't looked into that much about how um what sort of garbage collection that and that stuff C you have to take care of with your C code. I guess you need to do it inside your function before you exit and return, you know, back into Python. What's the biggest project that you've used C types or a C module with? I haven't. Okay. <laughs> Are you looking forward to the opportunity to do something? I am. I'm gonna go straight back to work and say, let's do some C. Okay. Okay, let's give Ben a hand. Thank you.